Avatar Halo, brought to you in part by Noble L Works, just outside of Anaheim Stadium and the Pond, or the Honda Center, where you can get drink specials just by mentioning Halos in the infield. Also brought to you in part by 714 Tickets. 714 Tickets. 714 Tickets is a place to go to get 10% off of any ticket purchase just by also mentioning H-I-T-I, Halos in the infield. Now enjoy the show. Live every night on the Halos in the infield baseball network. Welcome to the Halos in the Infield post-game podcast with Todd Fox, sponsored by Noble Ale Works Brewery, as well as 714 Tickets. This is your nightly destination for all things Los Angeles Angels. Come join Todd as he recaps every thrilling and disappointing moment from tonight's game, win or lose. Get ready for insightful analysis, fan reactions, and Todd's engaging commentary. Plus, fans can call in live to the Halo Hotline have their voices and opinions heard as well. It's the Halo Hotline. Stay tuned in for your chance to win free Halos merchandise with our weekly trivia. It's time to dive into the heart of Angels baseball with Todd Fox on the Halos in the infield post-game podcast. There's a drive from Mike Trout. See you later. That is long gone. It's the Todd Fox post-game podcast with your host, Todd Fox. Hey, 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 welcome into another episode of the Halos in the Infield post-game show with your host, Todd Fox, on the Halos in the Infield Baseball Network. I apologize for coming on a little bit later than I expected. I thought I was going to come on about an hour to two hours ago, but I had the biggest headache today because I'm finally starting to see that if I don't drink coffee every day, I get a migraine, and I got a migraine today, and I took some Tylenol PMs, and I knocked the hell out right after I ate dinner. So as soon as I got home, had some dinner, I knocked the hell out, and I barely woke up. My girl was trying to wake me up for like 30, 40 minutes, and I just kept going, leave me alone, five more minutes. She's like, you've been asleep almost two and a half hours. No, I haven't. You know, when you argue with somebody when you're half asleep, yeah, I gave her that treatment, so I had to apologize when I woke up. But then again, here we are with the angels sweeping, so maybe I thought it was a dream. You know, like like I had to pinch myself several times. I can't believe the angels swept the Marlins. Some people are like, well, the Marlins are 0-7. Well, we helped them get to 0-7. You know, we're starting franchise history for them, obviously. Schumacher uh, is having some issues over there with the Marlins. If if they can't hit, then they can pitch. But if they can't pitch, they can't hit. It's been one of those things where everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for the Marlins. And at least the Angels were not there to say, hey, like last year, the year before last, and the year before that, with a struggling team, the Angels are like, hey, we're the perfect medicine for you, and they roll over and help the other team get hot or help the other team uh, fix their losing mentality. You know, the Angels have always been that buffer. But there's a little something different with this team, and I know we're six games in, and at least the April 2024 Angels are kind of playing a little bit better brand of baseball. Now, they scored 10 runs today in route to a 10-2 to victory over those same Miami Marlins that we're talking about. But usually when the Angels score 10 runs, they get about two or three, maybe even four home runs with actual guys on base. And that's how they tally up the 10 runs. Not so much today, which again, last season I said, you know, home runs are nice and all. I like seeing the fireworks after a solo blast, but I'm tired of the solo blast. I like to get guys on base, create some issues, make the pitchers uncomfortable, run up the pitch counts, do some hit and runs. Just get some action out there instead of just like, hey, uh, Trout hit a home run a couple innings ago. Yeah, we don't need nothing right now. We're fine. No, keep the pressure on. And again, this is another one of those games where since that closed door meeting, you've seen a drastic increase of guys taking more pitches, fouling pitches off, working the counts, getting on base, taking a walk. I mean, hell, Sean Owell was down to his last at bat, and I thought, crap, He's going to lose that streak, and then bam, he gets hit by a pitch, and the streak continues. So um, I got a chance to listen to most of the game. That's why I'm on late. I was at work till about 5 o'clock. Obviously, the game started at 10 o'clock in the morning, so it's one of those rare games on a weekday where it's like it's over by lunchtime. We're probably only going to get a couple of these this year, but I still kept my word even though I was asleep for most of uh, the the evening. But Patrick Sandoval – 
look, this is a better performance, obviously, than the game one start against Baltimore. Is it against the Baltimore team? No. Is it something that can help his confidence? Yes. Was it the start that you wanted? Like, hell, I'd even say Tyler Anderson? No. Tyler Anderson came out there and gave you a really good start to his 2024 uh, season. Patrick Sandoval, on the other hand, at times for a couple innings out of those five and a third, struggled a bit with his command, got a couple walks, then got a couple hits. Uh, the two-out hit kind of killed him again, giving up a run. But there's not too much to complain about with his numbers overall. If you look at his numbers, five and two-thirds tonight, two runs, four hits, two walks. The walks were down seven strikeouts. Not bad at all. Cisnero, uh, a, a third of an inning. And then Guillermo Zaninga, uh, three innings pitch, no hits allowed, and a strikeout. So here's the thing, too, that I want to mention as far as the Angels are concerned before I get into how they scored. Last year, how many times was it? I mean, it was rare, literally rare when the Angels got under 10 strikeouts per game and had single digits for their lineup. Not talking about striking out the other team. I'm talking about this team would like whiff so many times rack up the strikeouts it was embarrassing a lot of times we talked last season and it was about 14 strikeouts out of 27 total outs you're striking out more than 50 percent of the time no contact you're not pressuring you're not walking it was pathetic so far through the first seven games the angels are not you know the strikeouts obviously came or first six games came in the first two games against baltimore they struck out a lot but again since then they have not been double digit strikeouts so it just goes to show you two things you don't have to have the most perfect pitching as we move along you don't have to have the most perfect pitching but i guarantee you when they come home here against boston and they play tampa if they're striking out the less than 10 times a game if they are you know taking a couple walks along with the hits that they're putting the ball in play and not really swinging for the fences like they did last year the Angels could have another winning, this time, homestand. And, and I think they could do some damage. Because if you're allowing, if, if you're getting the contributions that they are getting and getting that positive play, continuing to pressure the, the opposing pitchers' pitchers, or opposing teams' pitchers, and you're putting the pressure on them instead of having the pressure on us because we're always going one, two, three, one, two, three. It allows our pitcher to look at his tablet and go over things with Barry Enright and our pitching coach and begin to, you know, contemplate a, a, a strategy for the next inning instead of having to just go right out right away. You can't even get the towel around your goddamn arm with the ice before you're back out on the field. That's how it was last year. That's why a lot of times the Angels pitchers got cooked. But this year it looks a little different. It, I Six games in, I'm not saying it's going to be this way the entire season. I just like the way things are trending. Slowly but surely, we're trending back into a baseball team that doesn't rely heavily on analytics to make every goddamn decision. There's actual decisions made by Ron via his gut, which is, again, very pleasant to see. I like that. I want to continue to see that. I, I want to continue to see him make in-game adjustments, stuff that Numb Nuts Nevin wouldn't do and Smoking Joe wouldn't do either. So let's get into the lineup and what they did. Obviously, Patrick Sandoval gets the win. He tops off at 1-1 one and one so far this year. A.J. Puck takes his second loss. The experiment with him in the rotation is not going good. Zaninga, because those three innings uh, worked a save right there, uh, when the game was still sort of in hand, or not sort of in hand, but like uh, I guess, uh, you know, there was still an opportunity for a hold. If if he would have, he would have got a hold basically if he pitched less than three innings, and no one would have got a save. But since he came in when the game was under, I believe, or it was right at four runs, a four run lead, and they were pressuring for a couple runs, it qualified him for a rare three inning save. And I don't think that was the intention, but that's how it worked out. Um, let's get into how they scored. Uh, Taylor Ward got, and that's another thing. The Angels usually score early and stop. In this game, they kept the pressure on. Taylor Ward single to right. Renifo scored. Trout went to third. It was one nothing. Then Drury uh, to shortstop. Trout scored. Uh, Ward out at second. So it was a, a fielder's choice. There was an RBI right there for Drury. Two to nothing. Then Hicks scored on an air when Ward uh, and 
Hicks and uh, Ward scored on the air, uh, fielding air. So it was a uh, jury safe on that fielding air. And it was three to uh, four to nothing right there. Uh, Angels already in the third inning. You're feeling good. But then it got a little dicey in the third again. Three consecutive hits with two outs, including a walk with that as well. Led to two runs as Bell singled to center, scoring Garcia. Uh, and then also Berger would single to right on a two-strike pitch. Uh, he didn't finish him off right there, but credit to Sandoval. He got that final out. And then uh, after that, he just got a couple more innings in, qualified for the win. If there was four to two, Ohapi had singled to, to left with Jury scoring, Sano to third. And notice right now what I'm talking about. I'm already into the fifth inning. I haven't mentioned a home run yet. There, there's there's no home runs right now. They're just getting doubles and singles and working the bases. It's beautiful. I love that. So the Angels were up five to two. Then Adele hit a sacrifice for Sano to score six to two. Angels Nettle doubled to left Sano to, and scored, and so did Ohapi. So Nettle was having sort of a rough series in front of his family, but he came through with a two run RBI in the seventh inning to make it eight to two. The game was effectively over before that, but that was a nail in the coffin right there for the Marlins. Then Shanowell hit a sacrifice fly to right. Adele would score Neto to third, and then Ward would homer to center in the eighth inning just to polish things off his third home run of the season to make it 10 to two and the Angels win. One thing that I'm taking away from this home, this road trip is, you know, a guy that, I haven't been a fan of the last couple of years and Taylor Ward with all his double plays, his like sort of like swing so far through the first six games, he's not being that liability. And I was really questioning Ron Washington's decision to put him at number four, but so far at number four, a position where we need someone to have protection for Mike Trout and, and, and scare people. I thought Taylor Ward, really? Taylor Ward, Mr. Unlucky, Mr. Finds the only piece of concrete and all the outfield runs right into it. Mr. I get hit in the face. I'm done for the season. I, you know, like, like he hasn't finished a season because of stuff like that. I think only a couple of years ago. So he's had bad luck. He's hit into a lot of double plays. The average has really not been there, but so far Taylor Ward has been killing it. Uh, and, and, and I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm eating crow on that one. He's doing really good. So the angels get. 10 runs on 12 hits, a very healthy, very sexy, a uh, bit of hitting before the angels. I mean, I really, really like that. Um, again, how many times a week last season, did you watch angels baseball where they got maybe five runs on five hits or <laughs> three runs on two hits? Uh, it was very rare during the week to see the angels or in a stretch of games during a week or even a month. For them to get double digit hits. So they've already done it a few times already. So that this is this is nice, a nice thing to see. They're putting the barrel on the bat and seeing what happens. Uh, I, I really like their approach so far going into it. So let's get into the awards tonight. Who won the Stamos for the best offensive player for the Angels tonight or for the winning team? Well, let's talk about that. Hold on, I gotta play the thing real quick. Hold on. This is this is the uh, award for golden stamos. Stamos for best player on the field tonight goes to Taylor Ward. The aforementioned Taylor Ward, three for five, continues to shine, two RBIs and a home run tonight as the Angels get that 10-2 to two win. Again, if Taylor Ward is behind Mike Trout and giving you that kind of protection because Mike Trout went one for four tonight, um, the only the only negative on the lineup tonight was that Renifo was feeling a little under the weather. He went one for three. Uh, he let off the game with a double. The player... Uh, known as ass by my daughter uh anthony rendon uh got, was a healthy scratch he got the day off and nobody missed his ass did we you know i'd rather see renifo go one for three and a strikeout than see renifo go oh for four and again just like my dad says when he sees renifo how can a guy bat like that he has one of the most laziest swings out there boy does he suck and for my dad to tell you know to tell you that a certain player sucks he must really suck. He's watched years and years of Angels baseball. 
Now let's find out who got the Nacho Night Award for worst player on the field. I love the nachos, gas station nachos. I love the nachos, yeah. Gas station nachos. Ow. Ow. The, lo- <laughs> the losing pitcher tonight. Well, not losing pitcher because that was Puck. But the worst player on the field was Kent Emanuel. Who the hell is Kent Emanuel, you would say? Well, he was a guy who pitched three innings after Smith had came in, uh, put the game away for the, the Marlins. He came in to mop things up when it was 6-2, to two, and he didn't help out things. His ERA is now 12 as he threw 58 pitches. He went three innings, gave up four hits, four runs, all earned three walks, only got two strikeouts, and surrendered that home run to Taylor Ward. So, uh, Taylor Ward had a fantastic road trip with three home runs coming home. And uh, a guy like Emmanuel had a terrible, terrible uh, start to his season. And again, here's the other thing, too, folks. Uh, 124 pitches thrown by the Angels pitchers tonight, 85 for strikes. How sexy is that? And then the Marlins wound up throwing 180 pitches. That's because we're pressuring them. That's because we're putting guys on base. And they're having to throw more. Again, look it up. Look up if you're a stats geek, a guy like me, and look up all the games last year where the Angels threw far too many pitches and also saw way less than the opponent uh, on a routinely night, uh, on a nightly basis, not getting, uh, you know, getting out hit most nights. And, you know, you may have hit more home runs, but they were solo blasts and you were beaten, you know, like, so again, there is a change in philosophy, and and I, I like what I'm seeing. I, I you know this is what we want to see as Angel fans. So let's get into those comments here tonight. Again, very 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 late show. Uh, let's see. Landon says sweep. Dan Rio says this is a late. Uh, <laughs> the Halos aren't even playing anymore. It was almost twelve hours. Uh, Halo Joe says good night for uh, so he's maybe going to sleep right now. It's all about Anaheim Angels four and two Angels sweeping the Miami Marlins. How about this? How sweet it is, Rally Chris says. Also, our ex Otani just hit his first home run as a Dodger just now. I hate him with a passion right now. Uh, let's see. Also, Big 20 checking in. Marlins 0 and 7. Anaheim Angels will be ready for the Red Sox. And uh, let's see. Also, Mario says, I didn't watch the game, but I was blown away. Sandoval didn't choke, and the offense kept rolling. I'll take it right now, and I'll be happy with it. Exactly. One game at a time. Beat the teams you're supposed to beat, and we'll see what happens in the next series. You know what I mean? So, uh, same thing Dan just said. Beat the Dan, uh, beat the bad teams when they are down. Tired of being that team and the team to back up the bad teams and help them out because that's what we were talking about when the show started. Uh, my boy Cole won last night the surfing, and I'm going to the surf contest tomorrow. And the Angels won today. And oh yeah. That's big 20 right there. Dan says Sandy pitched well today. Vince checks in. Why do people want to give Rendon a standing ovation? Is a standing ovation for him being a dumbass? I believe that is, Vince, something that's circulating around or that circled around the Internet as a April Fool's joke. Uh, There's no – I don't care how many angel honks you know. There's no way – that you got some angel uh, halo honks that are going to give that dude a standing ovation. I am going to be there in full force on Friday, booing my ass off. If there's any Moreno in the house, number one. And when they get to Anthony Rendon, when the stupid PA announcer goes third baseman, number six, Anthony Rendon, I'm going to be booing my ass off louder than I did for squid. So F that guy. Uh, the chair says I'm sitting down with number six introduced. Uh, ha ha. No, I'll be booing right there. Balls, balls, and Stuka's over Disneyland. I don't have that song yet. Like I told you, I'm I'm working on the soundboard, soundboard, so I should have it ready by Friday. So don't worry about that. I'll have your Stuka's. Trust me, because right now everyone's like, "What's up with the soundboard?" And I'm like, "Dude, I'm gonna have it fixed. Hopefully on a third party app, so I don't have to keep switching off the comments to the sound. That's what's really annoying with this setup." Everything else with StreamYard is beautiful, except I can't do the sound in the comments at the same time. It's pissing me off. What the hell's going on out here? Exactly. Time for you to check out what I want. I want balls and balls and John Stamos. There he goes. He wants a soundboard. That's what he wants. Uh, let's see. Also, let's get into uh, back to the comments. A uh, word is on. A uh, word is on fire. The chair says. 
uh grill master checks in with uh show Hayes homer q o uh a q all right uh boo q the o good for you on the soundboard yeah that's exactly i can't stand that guy again soundboard will be fixed soon uh, also jack chandler says marlins are cooked right now ac says rendon's the most productive day so far <laughs> that is true keep him away from the the uh the, the players altogether, and that's pretty productive silent e says i was getting worried that it wasn't gonna happen glad you made it on today i appreciate that silent e uh the angels uh yeah you know look i i was knocked the hell out dude so like i <laughs> i'm sorry for coming on late uh, Shauna will extended that streak despite coming off the bench. Jack says exactly. And that's the thing too. How unselfish is that? How unselfish is him not being a diva, even though he's like a technically a rookie, he could pull that card and say, Hey Ron, you know how important this is to me. I'm not going to come off a bench off the bench in a game. We're blowing out a team. Um, I want to extend that streak. I want to keep starting. No, he came off the bench and he got hit, but he extended the streak. So, again, that's very cool of him. Uh, also, Mario says, kudos to Ward coming back after getting hit in the face. Some guys don't come back from that. That's true. They're never the same because uh, it, it is very scary to get in the box. I don't know if you've ever or how many of you have ever faced a 90 or 100-mile-per-hour uh, fastball uh, coming at you i mean it's it's the weirdest thing you could do it all you want in video games but to see the guy throwing and as soon as his motions halfway through you've already got to you know kind of get your leg leg up or what however you're gonna you know tweak your stance and get ready to swing crouch in or or you know duck down or whatever however you swing you got to be ready to swing because as soon as it leaves his hand it's going to be at your at the catcher's mitten in less than two seconds it's the craziest thing ever uh, let's see. Also, Talon says, I'm so happy about the wins, but how much is it about the Marlins being that bad? Well, Talon, we'll see when the Angels come home, but I know that there's something to the Angels winning, though, because, again, that's still a good enough team that could have beaten the Pirates if you watch that Pirates series three out of four. They lost two of those games in extra innings, and they lost another one by one run. They were only blown out in one of those games, and it was like that with the Angels here, too. They only were blown out once. And then the other two games were relatively close. So the Marlins are just having an issue right there, but we'll see. Uh, like, like again, um, Boston's can, I think uh, we'll, we'll go over the scoreboard in a little bit. Boston did, uh, they were four and two before. Let me just make sure if they won today. Yeah, they won today. So they're five and two uh, coming into uh, to Anaheim stadium on Friday. So they're going to have a slightly better record than us. They had a nice little road trip, although it helps that they're in Oakland. But uh, their pitching's not that great, so we'll see if the Angels can take advantage of that as well. Otani, who I'd never heard of her, Facebook user says, how bad are the Marlins if we swept them, if they were swept by our Angels? Well, again, we'll see right now. Uh, Marlins pitchers, ball four, ball eight, uh, ball 12. So I believe I may have that one at least uh, with the, uh, the the pitches right there. Hold on, let's see. Let's see let's see if I have that sound. But I know I had that one uh let's see oh i think yeah it's this one ball four ball eight low and vaughn has walked the bases loaded on 12 straight pitches boy how can these guys lay off pitches that close exactly infinite ones or infinite 91 says we're doing a lot of good things right now but unfortunately this season is still very young but i would uh and i would like to eat crow gladly me too me too. Uh, have you some Wheezy says, what's good, Todd? What's up, Wheezy? Uh, I believe I saw on your post you're working for the Padres now. He's got a job in a baseball organization down there. So kudos to you and congratulations uh, uh, with that. Uh, you got to fill us in more on that. We're going to have you on again this year. Uh, and hopefully, because last last couple times we've had on Wheezy, it's been after like losing streaks or, you know, it, it sucks because he can't be positive. He's one of the coolest Angel fans you'll get to meet uh and, and very classy dude so like hopefully uh this time we have him on it's when we're playing better and then that way he could be more happy because uh again we've we've had him on a couple times and it's just like the angels are bad so uh yeah we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll get with wheezy and hopefully have him on soon uh let's see also maddie matt checks in with i know it's early but seeing us win four in a row is great exactly why should leprechauns never work out they'll press their luck oh my god here we go with the jokes grillmaster also says why did the leprechaun refuse a bowl of soup 
he already had a pot of gold. Good grief. Talon says, uh, good to know that the pi- uh, about that the, the Pirates series. Boston swept Oakland. Uh, there you go. Red Sox pitching very well. And, and the Red Sox right now are not a team that is, um, you know, all like projected to have a real good season like the Angels or, or like like another team. They're, they're, they're a team that's like struggling themselves. They don't really have that lineup. So we'll see where they go for the rest of the season. But, uh, you know, obviously two teams that are off to surprising starts. Boston was supposed to finish fifth and they're five and two right now in first place or tied for uh no actually they're in second place because the yankees won again they came back and beat the diamondbacks so let's get into the scoreboard real quick it's not gonna be that long of a show because it, it is pretty late um but i just want to let you guys know on friday if you're at the game come and say hi or hit me up i'll be there uh walking around um decided not to do the honk the honk for this homestand but the following homestand, it's on. I'm bringing all my shit and uh, be dressed as a clown. And I'll be passing out a lot of stuff to all the fans for free. Uh, we'll be there and having a good time and yucking it up all Saturday. I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know when the honk's going to be there, the Halo Honk Clown. But uh, for Friday and Saturday, I'll be there at the game. If you guys want to have a beer with me or hang out, talk some Angels baseball or just shoot the shit, I will be there. Hit me up on the Instagram or on uh, Facebook. Uh, just shoot us a message. I'll be there to respond. Uh, let's go over the scores real quick. The Orioles uh, beat the Royals four to three. Uh, you had the Twins topping the Brewers, handing the, the Brewers their first loss seven to three. Texas wins to go to four and two as well. They beat the Rays four to one. Boston uh, shut out the Athletics one to nothing. Yankees come from behind to beat the Diamondbacks. They go to six and one. They win six to five. The Reds go to four and two as they win four to one over the Phillies. The Ohio team wins again. They are uh, they win eight to nothing over the Mariners. Uh, that's in Seattle, and then also the Cardinals uh, lose to the Padres three to two. Both teams scuffling a little bit. Four and five Padres. Cardinals three and four. Pirates take their first loss of the season. They lose to the Nationals five to three in Washington. The Rockies lose again to the Cubs. Cubs go uh, four and two, nine to eight over the Rockies in a slugfest. Uh, Blue Jays off to a slow start. Only one hit. So they were no hit in this uh, series, and they only get one hit against the Astros today. Lose eight to nothing, and the Dodgers just uh, pulled another victory. They're now seven and two as they beat the Giants, who are now two and five. Uh, and then you had the uh, what is it? The Braves and White Sox were rained out, and Detroit and the Mets were rained out. Uh, the interesting thing about the Detroit Mets game was I wanted to see if Detroit. Uh, is still 4-0 to see if they would knock off the Mets because they're already panicking in New York with the Mets being 0-4. So there you have it there. You're up to date on the scores and everything going on with the, the team tonight. If you guys want to call in, it's 714-598-3221. The number, I'll show it again right there. We'll take a couple phone calls before I hit the skids and get ready for Thursday already. Uh, it's this week is flying by, but we'll have a dodge. We'll have a uh, day off tomorrow. It's the Halo Honk line. Hey, Todd. <laughs> What's going on, Big Twenty? I'm psyching because my friend won the surf contest last night. Nice. That's and awesome. Then, and then tomorrow, I'm going to the beach all day to support my friends. In a contest, and hopefully my friend wins this weekend. Well, that's nice. I mean, you're always at the beach, bro. It could be like 50 degrees and you're at the beach. Dude, and I'm going to surf in the morning. Damn, look at you, man. By the way, real quick, and I, I want to know how much do you spend on your on your wetsuit? That's got to be expensive if you're always out there. Like 150 or something. I knew it. That's good quality, yeah. though. But but I I have I've had my license for almost a year now. Wow! All right, no accidents, right? Uh, uh, not yet. But <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but um, but what's it called? I might be getting a girlfriend soon. Nice, nice. You got to keep us yeah. up to date on that, my man. I will all season long. But um, yeah. I'm, uh, I'll, next. October after this summer, I'll have my. It will be a year since I've had my license. 
All right. So, what are you doing? All right. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, hopefully we win on Friday night. And, yeah, hopefully Angels can sweep the Red Sox and Rays. And I'll be watching Friday night, and hopefully my friends can win the surf contest this weekend. Are you going to be at the game? For, nah, I'm not. But I'm going to the surf contest all weekend. So hopefully the Angels win all weekend. And it will be a happy weekend for me if one of my friends win and the Angels can get another sweep. There you go. All right, Big 20. Yep. You have a good Ball night, man. Going on Friday night when the game is and go. How and dare go. you? <laughs> All right, Big Twenty. That's Big Twenty right there calling in. He's pumped up about the Angels. Went a little bit over ninety seconds. It's the Halo Honk line. Yo, what's up? What's going on? I've been just pumped at this small ball that Washington is now implementing. Yeah. What's your favorite part of that? Just that they're actually working walks now. Correct. And I actually think this year we're a playoff contending team because we don't have Numb Nuts Nevin or Smoke and Joe. Well, I mean, it's it's early, but I just like the fact that they're competing. And if they could do this past April into May, I'll, I'll start to believe into May. I believe uh, My inner honk will come out. And maybe we won't have Taj going, Nevin! Nevin, can I get my win? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think the less we see of him, the less we see of Rendon, I think this team is a lot better. Honestly, I think after this season, if Washington just rides out, they ride out Rendon's contract and I'll resign him, I think we can have something better. Better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anything's better than Rendon. He's giving you absolutely nothing. So are you going to be booing him on opening day? Most likely. Hell, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, Landon. I don't want to get rid of Urshela, though, and instead of Rendon. Yeah, well, well, you're stuck with Rendon, but the thing that pisses me off is Urshela signed for like $1.5 I mean, really dirt cheap. We could have got him. Yeah, and now he's in Detroit. Correct. Just so many good players we lost. Yep. Mustakis is still out there. If we need an extra hitter, I would definitely take another flyer on him. But we'll we see. We don't have going loopy this year and Squiddy not doing anything. Yeah. That's a blessing for me right there. Not having those two morons on the team helps out as well. But I think Loop also is like, like Nevin, where's my weed? <laughs> yeah. In a country voice. But all right, Landon, we'll see you Friday at the game, man. I'll come by and see you and your uh, your grandpa out there. All right. All right, brother. Have a good night. That's Landon right there. If you guys want to call in, 714-598-3221. We go. Uh, we'll see if the Angels can get that those W's. We'll talk about the probables here real quick as well. Because Oh, hold on. We got a call here. It's the Halo Honk line. Hey, Todd, how you doing? It's Terry. Oh, Terry Smith. How's it going, Terry? I mean, did you guys make it out there to Miami at all? I couldn't tell if you were broadcasting from the van or you, you actually made the flight. Well, I'm calling you live from the AMA 30 van right now. Oh, okay, wow. All right. That didn't answer the question. Hey, don't but forget, everyone, Don't forget to catch me on the, uh, if you want the radio broadcast of your angels, catch me on the, uh, AM830 or the Angels Radio app. <laughs> I love how you say app, by the way. App. <laughs> oh, will that uh will we have some Bandai Napco commercials from you this year? Because I haven't heard one yet. App. <laughs> okay, okay, we get it. We get it. We get it. You, you know how to say app. That's good. Um yeah, so Bandai Na uh, Namco. I didn't see any uh Pac-Mans up there on the scoreboard. You know, I'm a big Pac-Man fan. Well, usually <laughs> they're, they're still playing. You're calling a game right now. I went. I went through the scoreboard, and I think the last game was a uh, the Dodger game. So, what what game are you watching? Yeah, I'm watching something. I think it's a rerun. Hey, I just got <laughs> off watching the new Roadhouse movie with Jake Gyllenhaal. I really enjoyed that one. You you, you must be the only one, because Terry. I mean. 
that that movie didn't do too good. Well, you know, I was always a big fan of the original with Patrick Swayze and Sam Elliott, but uh, I always mix Sam Elliott up with Chris Elliott. <laughs> two completely different guys. <laughs> just a tad. Just a tad. Just a tad. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that movie. I thought it was good. A lot of a lot of guys with their shirts off. I was a little uncomfortable, you know. I don't, <laughs> I don't uh, venture off into that direction there. Well, but, it, uh, well, to change the subject, how did you feel about the Angels getting a lot of hits? Uh, you know, you weren't able to say out of here, you know. So, like, except for once, you know, out of ten runs. I mean, are you happy with the way they're hitting, other than hitting the home runs? You know, I I, I like seeing uh, I, I like just seeing the uh, the production of small ball and and the small hits going out there. You just you really I don't know what I'm talking about, Todd. <laughs> I really I'll tell you what I'm going through withdrawals because I am not able to announce the home run as much anymore, and I I think I'm uh, I, I think I'm losing it. Count is three and four. <laughs> Well, I mean, like something that can get you back on track maybe is making a couple left turn. No, actually, three left turns, and then you make a right to OG's. Maybe a nice slice of OG's oh, pizza boy. will help you get your memory refreshed. Head out down to OG's and keep making those lefts until you make a right and then a left again. Maybe <laughs> you want to back up with a three point turn and flip a biatch, as they say, down in East Los Angeles. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, I. Uh, you know, what get me out of the funk is if we do some requests, uh, maybe some people in your chat there can, can uh, offer up uh, their, their name and I can yell out a home run call for them. Uh, yeah. If they want to put in the chat the, about the home run or if they, if they want their name to be broadcast, go for it. I mean, uh, maybe, maybe you can start with big 20. Cause you know, he's going to volunteer himself. Big 20 at the plate, pull it on his crotch area. <laughs> Just enough to creep there with his bat. And here's the pitch. This one's lifted high into deep left center field. And this ball is out of here. <laughs> oh, boy. You can put a halo over that. That felt good, Todd. Big 20 with the... his 0 and 2. <laughs> but he just hit a home run. How's it 0 and 2? I make no sense, Todd. <laughs> hey, Todd, you know, I, I uh, now that baseball season's. Uh, uh, at hand, I I am um, taking a break on my stand-up comedy side job that I usually take on the off season at the Laugh Factory in Covina, California. Yeah, Town we. Is seven and nine. <laughs> well, we, <laughs> I don't know how you get seven and nine, but we haven't heard you give out any uh, you know comedy specials since we posted the last one. So you have some material for us. Well, I got a couple. I wrote down. I don't know if you have a if you have a drum set nearby. Uh, let me. I don't have that installed yet. I was trying to get that up. Um, that's what she said, or he said. Uh, but uh, I will have that going here pretty soon. Oh boy! Hey, well, I'll do my own version of a drum roll. Uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and <laughs> fill that in. I, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, work with what you. Do. <laughs> boy, so stuffy in this van here. I just realized. It. <laughs> Gotta crack a window here. Here we go. Yeah, let's hear it. So a guy gets a, a guy gets a hooker and takes her to a hotel room and they bump uglies. <laughs> after it's done, the girl keeps playing with his wang for twenty minutes. The guy looks at her and says, "Boy, you really like doing that, huh?" And she says, "No, nah, I just miss mine." <laughs> <Cal's going too. laughs> you know how to get a fat girl into bed? How? Piece of cake. No. One and three. <laughs> One time I saw a transgender male walk into a woman's restroom. I had to applaud him for that. That's a that's a, a lot of bravery there. That takes a lot of balls. Count is <laughs> one and two. <laughs> hey, how do you get rid of unwanted pubic hair? I don't know, Terry. You spit it out. Count <laughs> three and four. <laughs> You know how you can tell your wife is dead? How? The sex stays the same, but the dishes pile up. Oh! One and two. <laughs> so a blonde drops off her blouse at, a, at the cleaners. Uh -huh. the way out the door, the lady at the counter says, come again. The blonde turns back and says, no, it's toothpaste this time. Oh! 
Oh. One and one. Jeez. Hey, my wife looked at me with her sexy look and said, I oh, want you to make me scream with only two fingers. So I poked her in the eyes. <laughs> this has been brought to you by Land of Lakes. Everyone's favorite butter owned by the, their farmers, bringing you a delicious, fresh taste from their farms <laughs> to your table. Eat it like you own it, an all-American company. Land of Lakes. We removed the Native American, but kept the land. <laughs> yeah, family four pack. <laughs> oh, Terry, boy, man, I want to see you back in the Laugh Factory. This is some good stuff. <laughs> oh, boy, I opened up for Tom Arnold last weekend, and... And uh, hey, that guy's lost his touch, let me tell you. Uh, I don't think he's been relevant since he was married to Roseanne. And I bet you most of our audience doesn't know who that is. Well, that doesn't say much for me opening up for him, does it? No, it doesn't. Count, <laughs> count as one and two. <laughs> All right, Terry. Well, I appreciate the comedy, man. I mean, this is pretty good. I mean, uh, can you call back again? I mean, especially after a win. I mean, we're in such good spirits after a nice little uh, sweep and a thumping of the Marlins there. Oh, boy. There's been a lot of uh, sweeping and thumping in this van. I've been so excited with the uh, with the way the Angels are playing. Uh, good old-fashioned Angels baseball. Let's bring it back, all right? All right. I like it. All right. I'll talk to you later. Oh, oh boy. Ooh, I just had a – I got to use a restroom. I don't know what to do now. Oh, there's a paper bag. I'll talk to you later, Dad. <laughs> All right, Terry. Have a good night. That's t Terry Smith right there. So, yeah, Terry, uh, good job right there. Uh, jokes coming. Oh, there's another phone call here. It's the Halo Honk line. Oh, it's Supra. What's up, Supra? How you doing, my man? Good. Um, I mean... The Dodgers won, so that's good. Or at least for Tani, but the Angels won as well, so that's also good. Mm hmm Yeah, man. Rendon needs to get the fuck out. I don't really care about the, that money anymore, man. He just needs to get the fuck out. If he, I'm sick of this guy. Yeah, he's definitely a guy that, bro, if, I, if they continue to win or at least stay above 500, he's going to be someone that's going to bring them down. Yeah, Rendon needs to either A, Fucking perform like or like retire at this point because I I think the best for him is to like retire and like take care of, take care of his family at this point because he's not really performing man and if the Angels actually do perform this year which I think they will do despite all odds they need to like yeah it needs he needs to start performing or he needs to, he needs to stop you retire. Yeah, I mean, I'd like him to walk away. He's made enough money, in my opinion. So there's there's really nothing for him to prove, and that's why he's playing as crappy as he is, dude. He has a shit attitude. I would love for him to leave as well. Yeah. Hey, yesterday I didn't call, but did you see Tyler Anderson? Seven innings, man. Oh, yeah. Good, but he, he won the Stamos Award yesterday. I mean, he, he looked just as good as Detmers, if not better. So, I mean, if we get kind of like, I know we're not going to get that every time, but if we can get a few appearances like that a month, uh, it's going to help this team win a lot of, or at least some games we should, we would have lost last year, you know? Yeah. So hopefully Tyler Anderson bounces back. I just want 80% of what he did in 2022. And I'll be happy. Reed Detmers, full potential, Sandoval, bounce back to 2022. I just want a solid rotation from the Angels. Then I think we'll be above 500. But that's, man, I don't know. It's the Marlins, but we beat them pretty bad, badly uh, today. So. And who are you playing again? Let me, let me see. I forgot. We got Boston, and then we got my uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, Boston, I think we'll take, at best, we'll be uh, sweeping them. Uh, at least we'll be taking two. How many games are you playing again? I forgot. I'm, I don't really check schedules anymore. I'm too busy. Let's see. Oh, we got three so, and three. Three and three. So I'll, I think uh, at at the least, very least, the Red, Red Sox will be take two of them. Um, and at the hopefully we win one at Tampa Bay. If we can two games, if we win two games at Tampa Bay, that's great. Three, I'll be very happy. 
And yeah, same things, uh, same, uh, same for the away games, Red Sox and the Tampa Bay. Yep, yep. <clears throat> Got to take those games at home, my man. And one of these times, mm-hmm. one of these times we'll hang out uh, either if I go on a road trip or something like that, we'll catch a game together, Supra. Oh, yeah. But, uh, hey, man, good win today. Hopefully uh, I'll, we're off tomorrow, but Friday call in again, man. I'll, I'll probably do a late post game because I'll be at the game. It'll take me a little bit to get home. So. Yeah. All right, Supra. Have a good rest of your evening, my man. All right, see you later. All right, later. That's super right there. <clears throat> um, so let's go over the pitching matchups real quick. Uh, on Friday, starting with Friday, Griffin Canning, 0-1, coming off the loss in Baltimore, where he was charged with five runs, three of which were earned. Uh, he takes on the uh, Boston Red Sox, and we're going to look at uh, Cutter Crawford. Uh, Cutter Crawford is a right-handed pitcher. Uh, so righty righty matchup here. Uh, last year he was uh, six and eight as a starter through 129 innings pitched. He started one game so far this year, uh, six innings, three hits allowed, one run, got a no decision, and had seven strikeouts. So he got off to he got off to a good start. It'll be his second start of the season uh, on that Friday night. Then it'll be Saturday's game. Saturday it will be Reed Detmers after his nice performance will go against uh, the one Garrett Whitlock. He is a right-hander as well. So righty-lefty matchup right there. <clears throat> Whitlock is uh, last year's numbers, 5-5 five and five in 10 games total start. Um, uh, he's getting a second start so far. He pitched three uh, through five innings, three hits, one run allowed, uh, got the W. I think that was against Oakland, if I'm not mistaken. So you have, the, you have the, his decent performance. But I, I'm hoping that Detmers does good right there in that game. And then in the uh, the closer, you'll have Silseth, who had all kinds of bad luck and, and overthrew the pitches. He took the no decision in his first start. He goes up against uh, Tyler or uh, Tanner Hawk. Tanner Hawk is another right-handed pitcher. And Hawk, uh, let's see, last year went 6-10 and 10 with a 5.01 ERA so far this year. He's 1-0, and oh, three, uh, six innings pitched, three hits allowed, no runs, 10 strikeouts. So um, he's, again, like uh, Grillmaster said earlier, Boston's been pitching a lot better. I think it was either Grillmaster or, or uh, the chair uh, with James. So out of those three games, uh, I like the Angels to, to, to pull a rally Chris special. And I think they win two out of three. Um, I like the uh, – I don't like – and I hate it because it's a home opener, but I'm not liking the Angels with Griffin Canning in that first game, but I am liking the Detmers and Silces starts. I'm hoping I'm wrong, and I'm hoping they tear them up, but uh, that's what we got going on. Silseth will get the Sunday afternoon game, and then uh, Detmers and Canning get under the lights for the Angels right there. So hopefully – there we go. Uh, Big 20 says, are we doing a tailgate this year? Yeah, around mid-season probably. Not right now. Uh, just too many things happen before the se- uh, right now during the season. So we'll have something going right there. So with that being said, we got everything wrapped up. Uh, check out the podcast, James Squared, as they're going to – They, I, I'm pretty sure they talked about the series that was Miami, and they're going to have more in-depth coverage on Boston coming up here with that three-game over the weekend series. So appreciate them and their contributions and everybody else on the Halos in the infield. Cup of Joe uh, is also an episode that will be coming on Friday, and uh, we should have some more stuff online uh, when, from the game Friday and Saturday. So uh, look forward to seeing you guys there and gals, and hopefully you guys uh, can hit me up, uh, like I said, through social media. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll gladly have a beer with you guys or hang out and, uh, you know, we'll talk some Angels baseball. So for Todd Fox and everybody on Halos in the Infield, a little bit of shorter show, but it was a late ass start. I apologize once again. Uh, I needed to sleep. Apparently my body forced me to along with those pills. Uh, I need, I had a major migraine earlier, so it helped out to get that sleep. So for again, Todd Fox, we'll catch you on the flip side. Go angels. Angels win. Angels win. We're on a winning streak.